Welcome everybody to another game of Squirrels Baseball. I am Aaron and we are back home against Milwaukee. Kind of the last day of our normal lineup. Not, I mean, not the last day, last day of this series before we go into off day. So we've got another day game against Milwaukee. See if we show any signs of fatigue after the 11 inning game yesterday. Though, with uh, Jonathan being a left hand pitcher and Gonzalez planned to relieve him, uh, we should be okay. The only issue might have been Johnston pitching those extended innings. Um, he should pitch tomorrow, so hopefully, he can get enough rest today to be sharp again. For Thursday's game. I guess we'll find that out tomorrow. And Ryan Braun leads off against Jonathan. And we start off with a too high fastball. Actually, we start off with two of those. And Jonathan starts off with a 3 0 count to Braun. Finally gets a slider over for a strike. Swing and a miss. Full count now. Gets a called strike three. So it takes Jonathan a minute to get going, but he comes all the way back for the strikeout. And that'll bring Ronnie Cedeno to the plate, and he starts off with a swing and a miss. That pitch on the inside corner. Foul ball, still an 0-2 count. Another one fouled away. You see Sedano's average is dipped below the 200 mark. And he looks at a fastball for strike three. That'll bring up Aramis Ramirez with two outs in the first. And he looks at strike one. Swing and a miss strike two. That one too low. Swing and a miss strike three. Jonathan manages to strike out the side after opening up the game with a 3 0 count. So. Maybe he was a little late getting to the ballpark today. Didn't get to do his normal warm-up. Who knows? Look at the Brewers lineup. Looks like their normal crew. Jeff Supon is going to start things off. And Kester at the plate. He got a couple hits yesterday and ended up pumping his average up a little bit. Getting closer to that 300 mark again. Has a 1-1 one one count to start this at Bat swings and misses at a curveball, one and two, and that pitch too high, two and two the count. Swing and a miss, strike three. Marvin at the plate, he's still wandering through the desert, and he swings and misses at the first pitch. And that pitch too high, maybe uh, what? Three days of rest for Marvin. Maybe that's what he's going to need to get back on track here. <coughs> he's just not had a good start to the year. Pops that one to Cedeno at second for out number two. Chief at the plate. He, on the other hand, has done very well with a 412 average early on. Only the one home run, but he, contrary to how I created him, how I envisioned him, he doesn't really hit very many home runs, but he is a doubles machine. Has a 1-2 and two count at the moment. Supon winds and delivers. And Chief puts that in the center field for a base hit. A two-out single for Chief. That'll bring Terry to the plate. He looks at ball one. He's up to four home runs, which leads our team. Back. 
has a one and two count at the moment and he puts that into the gap in the left center chief's going to go on to third and he's actually going to turn towards home terry stops at second chief in there for a run so a little bit of a two out rally runner on second frank at the plate might not be done yet and he has a one and one count and he's going to line that up the middle. That's going to score Terry. Frank's going to... He doesn't know what he's doing and <laughs> ends up getting tagged out. I He screwed that all up, but he did drive in the run. So after the first inning, it's Milwaukee 0, Indianapolis 2. <clears throat> so now Prince Fielder will lead things off for the Brewers in the second inning. And Prince Fielder dumps that into center for a base hit. That'll bring up Bill Hall after that leadoff single. He takes strike one. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Oh Swing and a miss, strike three. Big strike out there. That'll bring Van Hecken to the plate. I'm sure Jonathan would love to get a ground ball and maybe get out of this inning with a double play. Starts him off with a ball, though. He gets a second pitch over for a strike. Swing and a miss, one and two. And there's the ground ball, but hit too softly for a double play. Chief has to go to first with it. Does get that out, but moves Prince Fielder on to second base. And Gabe Kapler will try to knock him in for a run. He takes the first pitch for a strike. Second pitch too high for a ball. Swings and misses on a fastball, one and two. Jonathan not able to get the call on that high fastball or that low slider. So full count. Fielder stays put. This one hit up the middle. That will get through for a hit. Fielder's going to try to score. Marvin does go home with it, but not in time. Brewers cut the lead to one. Runner still on first. Two outs. Tony Gwynn Jr. at the plate. And he has a 2-0 and count. Jonathan not throwing as many strikes as usual, it seems. Does get the call on that pitch. And gets the call on that fastball. Two and two the count. Does not get the call on that fastball. Full count. Runner will go here. Swing and a miss. Strike three. So the Brewers do manage to get a run back to make it two to one Indianapolis. We'll go to the bottom of the second, and Tom will lead things off for the Squirrels. And he takes strike one. Swing and a miss, strike two. And looks at strike three. That'll bring Zach up to the plate. He's been very solid at the plate as of late. Kind of what I envisioned Marvin would do, but uh, it's, that has not come to pass, clearly. And Zach has a 1-2 and two count. And fouls that one away. We'll do it again. That one line just foul down the third base line. And looks at strike three. Two down, Joey at the plate. He's cooled off a little bit, but his average still at 320, which was almost unimaginable back in the first season. Has an 0-2 count here. He grounds that to short. Hall picks it up and gets it over to end the second inning. We've played two. Milwaukee 1, Indianapolis 2. Supon will lead things off for the Brewers in the third. Supon hitting 357. Don't know how many at-bats that count covers, but still very impressive for a pitcher. He grounds that one up the middle. Jonathan handles it himself and throws it over for the out. That'll bring up Ryan Braun. 
You remember Ryan Braun started with a 3-0 count and managed to strike out. Has a 1-1 one one count here after that swing and a miss. Fouls that one away. Just foul. I thought it was going to be a little more foul than that. And then looks at strike three as he did his first time up. That'll bring Ronnie Cedeno to the plate with nobody on and two outs. I'm going to have to blow my nose after this throw over to in the top of the third. Still 2-1 to one Indianapolis, and we have our own pitcher spot coming up in the bottom of the third. All right, Jonathan takes a strike. Pops that one into the air. Van Hecken comes out and grabs it for the first out. That'll bring Kester to the plate. He struck out swinging his first time up. Apparently on an eight-game hitting streak. Has a one-and-one one count at the moment. And that pitch too high. Grounds that one to third. Ramirez picks it up and gets it over for the second out of the inning. All right, here comes Marvin. Don't remember if I noted it. He is batting left-handed. He drives that fair ball. That'll right on the left field line behind third base. And he turns that into a double. Not the hardest hit ball, but extremely well placed. So we got a two-out double for Chief, who hit a... Uh, I think he doubled last time, this first time up. He definitely got a hit. I'm pretty sure it was a double. But unfortunately, he strikes out on three straight pitches here, so no damage done. We're through the first third. Brewers one, Squirrels two. And Ramos Ramirez will lead things off for the Brewers here in the fourth. And he looks at strike one. Swing and a miss, strike two. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Prince Fielder apparently still at spot number two for the home run lead. I'm not sure if that is for just the National League or Major League Baseball overall. We'll see if I remember to check out the stats after this game. Has a 2-1 and one count at the moment. And that slider too low, make it 3-1. and one. Again, Jonathan throwing a lot more balls than normal. Smacks that palm ball right to Joey, and it goes right through the wickets. E6 on that one, and that one is deserved. Joey usually very sure-handed over there, but let that one go through. The runner on first, only one out. Bill Hall at the plate. He's showing bunt now with a one and one count. And he does get it down. Chief picks it up and fires to first to get the out. Two down, Van Hecken at the plate. And Fielder waiting on second base to see if he can score. Van Hecken looks at a curve for strike one. That slider in the dirt, one and one. Fastball right down the middle, one and two. And a swing and a miss, and Jonathan gets out of the inning. No hits, no runs, one error in that half of the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Terry will lead things off for the Squirrels. That pitch a bit wild, 1-0 and oh the count. Terry smacks that one into center, and it does get down for a hit. Thought that might stay up to give Gwyn a play, but it is in there for a solid hit to lead off the bottom of the fourth, and that will bring Frank to the plate. And he has a one and one count. He hits that up the middle, and it will get through for another hit. Terry does stop at second. Still nobody out. Runners on first and second. Tom will take his turn at the plate. He struck out looking his last time up. Has an 0-2 count here. 
He was just all out of sorts that at bat. He goes down swinging, so now one out, runners on first and second. Zach at the plate takes strike one. That one will not. Oh, my. Bill Hall made a good play, and both runners assumed it was going to be a hit. So Terry easily doubled off at second. Which it was a good play. I'm surprised we didn't get a replay of that one. So we've played four. Milwaukee one, Indianapolis two. And Gabe Kapler leading off the fifth for Milwaukee. And he has an 0-2 count. Swing and a miss, strike three. <clears throat> Tony Gwynn now at the plate. He takes strike one. Grounds that towards second. Kester picks it up and gets it over for out number two. And that'll bring up Supon. He takes strike one. That curveball, two down and in. Grounds that towards third. Chief picks it up, and that will end the top of the fifth. We're halfway through. Brewers one, Squirrels two. And Joey is going to lead things off in the bottom of the fifth. He looks at a fastball right down the middle. That one too far inside. Grounded towards third. Ramirez picks it up. Gets it over for the first out of the inning. So Jonathan will take his turn. He had a foul pop up his first time up. Has a 2-0 and count here. And that one over for a strike. Jonathan let it go. Let's that one go two for ball three. Swings and misses to make the count full. Swing and a miss, strike three. I had to know he wasn't going to walk the pitcher. He sure hoped not. Supon already starting to look a bit tired out there. Which could explain the count the last time on uh, Jonathan on that last at-bat. Dealing with Kester now has a 1-1 one and one count. And Kester's going to put that into center field for a base hit. That'll bring up Marvin. That double last time up put his average up to 162. He looks at strike one. He's going to hit that one, but right to Cedeno at second, and that will end the inning. We'll move into the sixth inning. Still, Milwaukee 1, Indianapolis 2. And the Brewers are at the top of their order with Ryan Braun. He struck out looking both times up so far. Sure, he's eager to put something in play here at least. Has an 0-2 count at the moment, though. Does ground this one, but Kester able to pick it up and get it over for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Ronnie Cedeno. That pitch, two down and in. Swing and a miss, strike one. Puts that one right to... I guess it was up the middle, but hit pretty softly, so Joey able to run over and grab it and throw him out pretty easily. Two and two the count. Ramirez pops that sky high, but right behind home plate. Tom puts it away to end the top of the sixth. Good day from Jonathan today. We will turn to Gonzalez in the seventh. But before then, Chief is going to lead things off in the bottom of the sixth. Supon's still out there, but he's got to be about out of gas. And he starts Chief off with a 2-0 count. Make that 3-0. Does get that one over for a strike. Chief taking all the way. 
And Chief will walk. And that is going to end Supon's day. I'm kind of curious why they even sent him back out there. But David Risky is going to take over. At least with the fresh count, unlike yesterday. Which I don't remember if that was Risky that came in in that situation or not. But somebody did for the Brewers. Terry will come to the plate. Nobody out. Runner on first. And he takes strike one. Hits that one into the air. Bill Hall goes back to make the play and does. So now one on one out. Frank at the plate. He's singled twice today. Got that average up to 320. Takes strike one. Hits that one through the hole on the left side. For another hit, another single. So runners on first and second. Tom looking to get going today. He looks at strike one. Fouls that one away. 0 and 2. And he gets that one into left field. Chief's going to try to score. Braun. Just not much of an arm out there, I guess. Chief scores easily without much of a throw. So now 3 to 1. Zach at the plate. Runners on first and second. And Zach gets that into shallow right. Frank's going to try to score. Kapler with a better throw, but still not in time. So Frank in there to score to make it 4-1. to one. We get the carousel going. First and second. Still only one out. Joey at the plate. Now I've got to think about a pinch hitter here who I want to put in. It looks like they're trying to walk Joey. Instead, he pops it up on a 3-0 count. Didn't like that swing. Two down now. I guess we should probably put Phil in the game for defensive reasons. All right, two down now. Runner still on first and second. Risky delivers a fouled off pitch. Swings and misses again. I should, you know what I meant. Fouls that one away, but Van Hecken will make the play on that one. So two runs in that inning to make it Milwaukee 1, Indianapolis 4. And we're going to take Joey out of the game. And uh, yeah, it is Gonzalez's turn to pitch. Also switch Kester and Phil around. All right, Gonzalez will deal with Prince Fielder to open up the seventh inning. Puts the first pitch in the dirt. That one in for a strike. Swing and a miss, one and two. And Fielder's going to put that into the shallow right center gap. That'll be good for a single. Took a bit of a hard turn at first, but did not pull a Frank out there. So leadoff single again for fielder, Bill Hall. See what he can do with it. Looks at ball one. Looks at ball two. Gonzalez is finally able to get that cutter over for a strike. And gets the call on the changeup. One or two and two, rather. Swing and a miss, strike three, and Prince Fielder thrown out stealing. Strike him out, throw him out, nobody on base. Two outs, Van Hecken now at the plate. He grounds to third. Chief makes a diving play. Cannot get the throw over there in time, however. So, infield hit, but Chief probably stopped a double, so still a good play. That'll bring Kapler to the plate. One out, or one on, two outs. He grounds to second. Phil picks it up, throws it over. And it is stretch time in Indy. Four to one, Squirrels. We'll see you in a moment.
Okay. Top of the order up for the bottom of the seventh. Risky throws to Kester, and that one too low. That one, he does get the call on. One and one the count. Kester pops that into the air. Hall is going to deal with that. Way up in the air, goodness. And Hall does catch that for the first out. That'll bring Marvin to the plate. I think his average is going to go up regardless of what happens the rest of the day, thanks to that double. Puts that one into the seats down the right field line. 0-2 the count. And he swings and misses for a strikeout. That'll bring Chief to the plate. He takes strike one. Takes strike two. Swings and misses strike three. Quick bottom of the seventh. We'll move into the eighth inning. The Brewers have 8-9-1 coming up. And we are going to turn to Hermita, even though this is it is still technically a safe situation, though it should be a more comfortable hold. And that will bring Sweeney into play third. All right, Tony Gwynn Jr. in the box for the Brewers. And he smacks a curveball right up the middle, right off the bat. No pun intended. So pitcher spot up. Milwaukee does pinch hit. They're going to turn to Mercado. I feel like we've seen him a lot lately. It's a little surprising. He's their top pinch hitter, apparently. I feel like they have better options on the bench. Anyway, first curveball outside the zone. So is the first fastball. So 2-0 and the count. That one in for a strike. That curveball in for a strike. 2-2. Two and two. Goes back to the fastball. Mercado fouls it off, and we will do it again. Still 2-2. Two and two. This curve or fastball line to Kester at short. He grabs it and does throw to first, but there was no real play there. So one down, runner still on first. Ryan Braun at the plate. And he starts off with a 2-0 and count. Pops that one foul. Tom looks like he's going to run it down, and he does. So two down now, runner still on first. Sedeno at the plate. He's had a rough day. First curveball in the dirt. And that fastball off the plate. That curveball catches the outside corner. Two and one. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Swing and a miss. And Hermita gets around that hit. So we'll move to the bottom of the eighth. Still four to one Indianapolis. And Terry will lead things off for the Squirrels. And he will do that against... Bobby Say. And uh, Mercado will stay in the game to play right field. All right, Terry's doubled and singled today. Also fouled out. I think it was a foul out. Has an 0 and 2 count at the moment. He puts that one up the middle for another single. So nobody out. One on. Frank at the plate. He's three for three on three singles. Although after one of those singles, he was immediately thrown out on the base paths for for whatever was going through his head. I, I don't know how he managed that. He looks at three strikes, so he is gone. One down now for Tom. His average sitting at 299 at the moment. Terry takes off, and he's probably going to be thrown out by, oh my goodness, Country Mile. Oh, and two the count on Tom, now two down. And he puts that into the outfield. Braun's not going to get there over his head. 
Rolls back to that cavernous left center, and that'll be good for a double for Tom. Too bad Terry decided he had to try to steal a base for some reason with the three-run lead. So that'll bring up Zach with two outs, runner on second, and he looks at strike one. That one too low, one and one the count. And he grounds that one up the middle. Tom's going to turn towards home. And he's going to give Shibuya the day off after his blown save yesterday. So now 5-1 to one Indianapolis. Sweeney up for his first time. He looks at a strike. Looks at two strikes. And swings and misses. And that ends the inning. Still, we do score a run. We go into the ninth inning. Brewers 1, Squirrels 5. And let's see, we haven't seen Zap, I feel like, in a little bit. Let's put him into Zach's spot because Sweeney just got in the game. Bring Quinton in here to play right. All right, Aramis Ramirez will lead things off for the Brewers. He's hitless today. I feel like we've dealt with him a little better this series than we did last with the Brewers. Has an 0-2 count at the moment. And swing and a miss, strike three. So Prince Fielder, he's been on base every time today. Two singles and an error. Remember, he's the one that hit the ball that just went right through the five hole for Joey. Grounds that one sharply towards second, but Phil does handle this one and gets it over for and out. So now up to Bill Hall. He struck out twice and had a sacrifice bunt. He looks at strike one. And that's going to be a hit in the left center. Marvin going to run that down. Looks like Hall will stop at second. Two out double. Look at a replay of that hit. So Van Hecken now to try to keep the game alive. He will put that right down the first baseline, just fair. That's going to score a run, make it 5-2. to two. That brings up the pitcher's spot, and the Brewers predictably pinch hit. They're going to turn to Nitro. Going to... It is a safe situation now. We're going to see if Zap can get out of here without us having to go to Shibuya. Because sure Shibuya can use the rest. Although he puts that in the right center gap. And that's going to score another run. Nitro stops at second. So now 5-3. to three. And that'll bring up Tony Gwynn Jr. to try to bring this game even closer. He represents the tying run now. Has an 0-2 count. Finally, a ground ball Phil can handle, and that does end the game, but not after a little uncertainty. Your final score today, Milwaukee Brewers 3, Indianapolis Squirrels 5. So that might be the biggest run total that the Brewers have put up on us all year, but fortunately for us, we had one of our best offensive games against the Brewers as well. I'll admit, I had a, there was a game, I think, in the second season, maybe it was the first, where a Zap blew a, like a seven-run lead against the Phillies, and I was kind of having flashbacks to that. Thankfully, that didn't come through today. Terry got the player of the game honors based on his 
driving in the first run of the game. Which I guess is as good as any reason. So thank you everybody for watching. If you'd like to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, feel very free. Otherwise, we've got the series finale against the Brewers tomorrow. We'll see you then.